you are not a professional. You have not experienced anything like that. If you know that your friend or your family would be really defensive and they are too egoistic to accept that they have mental health issues, the Lulu is the new Salulu. I personally had friends who left me when I felt like I needed them the most. Welcome to Small Girl Big Talk where we talk about all the big stuff in adulthood like relationships, self-identity, money, mental health, and all the other important things that you care about. I'm your host, Wendy, and my hope for this podcast is for it to bring comfort and help you to feel a little bit less alone in your adulthood journey. It is going to be World Mental Health Day on the 10th of October, which is coming up really soon from the day that this episode goes live. And while I know that mental health awareness is an ongoing effort, I really wanted to create another episode that talked about mental health because it is no secret that I used to struggle with depression and PTSD. And I really try my best to be as open about it as possible with the hope that whatever I share can help just one person to get the help and the support that they need in their mental health journey. So in case you are interested, episode 10 was when I shared about my depression story and episode 11 was when I shared about healing from depression and how has depression changed my life. I would include the links of two of those episodes in my show notes in case you are interested to listen to those episodes. But in this episode specifically, I will start off by touching a little bit about the theme of this year's World Mental Health Day, but mainly I want to share with you some advice on how you can help your friend who you suspect might be going through or they have already told you that they are going through some mental health struggles. As this is a question that I often get asked by my friends, whether they are close to me or not, because I openly talk about my mental health struggles, people seem to come to me about questions like that. And while I am not a mental health expert. Again, I emphasize I am not a professional. I'm not a mental health expert. I do want to share what I know from someone who once struggled before. This is something that is more personal. It is not an expert advice, but I hope that by sharing my point of view, it might give you a guidance or a pointer on how you can decide what to do to support your friend. So the theme of this year's World Mental Health Day is mental health is a universal human right. And damn right it should be because everyone should have the basic right to get access for help on mental health struggles. And I'm going to pull up a few key messages that I found on World Health Organization's website. And I just want to talk about it. So one of the key message is that we must challenge the stigma and discrimination surrounding mental health. And I completely agree with it. We shouldn't be made to feel ashamed or judged just because we are struggling mentally especially for those who are literally diagnosed with mental disorder. It is nothing to be ashamed of. Like, would you shame someone who get cancer or who, like, I don't know, had to amputate their legs because of a certain problem that they have? You won't. So why should you feel ashamed if you have a mental disorder? Because it is a legit disorder. And even if you are not diagnosed, if you are just facing severe chronic stress, or maybe you are just having social anxiety, these are also legitimate mental struggles that you shouldn't be ashamed of. You have the right to feel the way that you are feeling. And we have to challenge the stigma and the discrimination that comes with it. Another key message that I found on the website says that everyone has the right to assess quality mental health care. And 
let's be real here. I currently am living in Malaysia, which is a developing country. And I have to say that while we do have affordable mental health care through our public system, which I think it's amazing. I think a lot of people in the rest of the world don't even get to assess affordable health care for mental struggles. But I do think that the public system is not there yet in terms of the quality when it comes to therapies. Okay, um, I think medication and all that, it's really affordable, it's accessible, even though there is a long wait time. At least it's there, there is that option. But when it comes to therapies, if you really want to go for quality therapies on a long term, I think mental health care, it's still so not accessible for a lot of people. I think even people who are earning a higher bracket when it comes to their income also struggles in getting consistent quality like therapy sessions because it is just that expensive. And I really hope that one day we can really get to the level where everyone gets quality support that they need when it comes to healthcare. But it's definitely a long journey that we have to get there. And that is why I really want to implore you to join me on this movement, to stand up for yourself and those around you to really raise awareness about mental health and see how we can help each other in this journey. And having said that, you know, one of the key message on the website also says that good quality community mental health services and supports are crucial for all our futures. And I truly believe in it. And that is one of the big reasons that I had this community in mind i had this podcast in mind in the first place because i know that such support system is very important for all of us to heal and to grow and to get the support that we need in our mental health journey or in our adulthood journey and that brings me back to why on today's episode I wanted to share some advice on how you can help your friends who are going through mental health struggles. First of all, you need to understand that there are different layers when it comes to mental health issues. On the surface, you might be more familiar with mental health struggles like stress, depression, and anxiety, which I believe everyone at some point of their life might have experienced any of these mental health struggles on different scales. And then there are situational mental health struggles. For example, postpartum depression or post-traumatic stress disorder or maybe mental struggles that are related to having chronic illness. These are very specific situational mental struggles. And then there are different kinds of disorders, like bipolar disorder, which is when someone struggles with depressive episodes with periods of manic symptoms. So I personally had a friend who struggles with bipolar, which she is pretty open among her close friends like myself. And she has shared with me that her medication has helped her a lot when it comes to managing the different waves of depressive and manic symptoms. Even though she is still struggling a lot and like her medication makes her really sleepy at night and stuff like that. But I have to say that I'm very proud to see that she's actually handling it very, very well as someone who is struggling with it. Or we have other mental disorder like schizophrenia, which literally makes you the Lulu. You know how people always say that the Lulu is the new Salulu, which is like a whole TikTok trend that I think doesn't make sense, but I, I, I get the whole trend. But anyways, you literally can be delusional and have hallucination if you have schizophrenia. So that's like on a different scale of mental health struggles. And then we have eating disorders, we have ADHDs, and there are a lot more illnesses that you and I might not be familiar with. For me personally, I went through clinical depression and PTSD. And I think I understand what it's like to have anxiety as well. So I can only speak for those who are in similar mental health struggles. 
For more severe cases, like if your friend is hallucinating and delusional, or if you suspect that they are binge eating or they're anorexic, I don't know if the advice that I'm going to share today is going to be helpful for you. You might need to speak to a professional expert to get better advice, but I hope that to a certain level, what I share might be still helpful for you. So let's get into the point. How to help friends with mental health struggles. This first advice is for those who are suspecting that their close friends might be struggling with something mental health related. I always say that the first step of getting help is realizing and accepting that you need help. If you notice that something feels really off with your partner or your friend or your family member, you have to open up the conversation with them. But you have to also do it very safely and respectfully for them. You want to be a safe space that they can feel comfortable to tell you about their struggles. Perhaps it's by asking them out to a cafe where it's really secluded and and there's not a lot of people so that they feel safe to talk to you about it. Perhaps it's having them to your house and it's just the two of you at the space to feel safe enough to talk about it. Or if you know that your friend or your family would be really defensive and they are too egoistic to accept that they have mental health issues, perhaps you can send a text because it's easier for you to express yourself without being cut off or ignored. How I would approach it is to start by being super honest about the whole situation. You can start by saying something like, Okay, I hope you don't get the wrong idea and that you don't get offended when I say this, but I noticed that you've been acting a little bit different lately. Or like you look very tired and you've been really easily agitated, which is unlike you. I know you very well and I feel like you are not being yourself. Emphasize that they are not being themselves because you know that The problem, it's not them. The problem, it's the mental illness, right? And offer your help and tell them that you just really care and you noticed this and you really just wanted to be there for them and see how you can help them with their problem. You don't need to give advice specifically when they start opening up to you. You just need to be a good listener. When your friends are sharing with you the pain that they're going through or whatever mental thoughts that they are struggling with, yes, maybe they are feeling helpless, but most of the time, they just wanted to express themselves to share with you what they are going through. They are actually not looking for a solution in you because they know that you are not a professional or you have not experienced anything like that. They just wanted you to be a friend for them at that moment. It is okay if you tell them that you don't know what to do or how to help them. It is okay if you don't have a solution for them. What they wanted is just to feel your heart and your presence at that moment and your support. So all you need to do as a friend is to really master the art of being a good listener. Ask them questions that allows them to express themselves and share about their thoughts. Ask them questions like, how do you feel? Why do you think you have these thoughts? Give them these prompts so that they can keep on sharing about themselves and be sure to listen to it without any judgment or trying to give any solutions even if something that they say doesn't make sense to you you don't need to express it all out because all they wanted was to feel heard and to feel seen be honest with them that you don't have solution but maybe you can tell them that you are there for them and by being there for them what i mean is if they want to get help to go to a counselor. Maybe you can offer to research with them about where to go for a good counselor or an affordable one. 
if they say that they are thinking of going to see a doctor, offer to accompany them to go to the hospital and wait with them as they get their diagnosis. If they want to just go to the gym and work out and forget about things, go to the gym with them. Literally be there with them. So I'm not going to go into too details about the differences between therapies and counseling and psychiatries and antidepressants, like all the different treatment methods. I've talked about them in episode 11. So if you are looking for more technical things on how you can help your friends, you might want to check out that episode. In this episode, we're talking more so about the mindset and how can you be a better friend for those who are struggling, okay? So the next thing that I also want to mention is do not question your friends when it comes to certain thoughts and emotions that they have. And please don't force them to share or explain anything if they are not ready. For a lot of people, what they're going through in their head might be a lot more complicated than you think it is. Perhaps they are still trying to make sense out of the trauma that they faced. Perhaps they don't even know why they are feeling a certain way. And honestly, that was it for me when I first started having depression. I kind of had a trigger point that started it all, but I didn't know why I was just spiraling into that darkness, into that dark hole, and I couldn't explain these thoughts. And even up till today, there were still a lot of times where I had some dark thoughts in my head that I verbally just am not able to communicate what I think or feel. Even to my fiancé Kevin that I trust a lot in my life. Because I just cannot seem to find the right words to describe how I feel. And I didn't want him to feel hurt or worried about certain things that I am thinking. So... Don't question your friend or force them to share with you if they are not ready. Just give them the space and you can always offer to create a safe space for them and wait for them to tell you when they are ready. And sometimes you don't even need to talk about it. When you spend time with your friends who are struggling mentally, Yes, I understand that sometimes they are looking for support and they want to talk about their problems and just let it all out. But I won't be surprised if half or more than half of the time they are actually just looking for a friend to just be normal with them. Watch a movie and talk about the movie. Learn some silly TikTok dances and laugh about it. Go for some cafe dates and talk about what's up in your work life, your personal life, and maybe your pet's life. I personally have been super into cute dog videos on social media, and I cannot help by thinking that if you're able to go to a pet-friendly cafe or a pet-friendly park, a lot of your friend's problems would probably be solved. (laughs) But okay, I know it would apply for friends who are afraid of pets, but... That's what I meant. Like, I I think that being a friend to someone who is struggling mentally doesn't necessarily mean that you have to talk about the problem all the time. Just because we are labeled with a particular mental illness, it doesn't make us less of a human. We just want to do very normal human things and find the joy in the day-to-day life again. But I do have to share this with you and it's that being a friend or a partner or a family to someone who is struggling mentally is going to be a long and painful journey mental health struggles are often a long-term thing it doesn't just miraculously go away in a short period of time and sometimes when things may seem to have gotten a lot better and normal there might be certain triggers that may bring everything back again. So it might take months, it might take years, it might be a lifetime. And even though it's not going to be like darkness every single day, most days are actually going to be very normal 
just with a little hint of darkness inside. For example, you still have to go about your day-to-day work, you still have to do your house chores, you still have to prepare meals for yourself. But those who are struggling mentally would kind of go through this with a little bit darkness at their side. And some days are going to be harder, but some days are going to be fun. And trust me, it will come to a point where together you can see the dark humor in all that you are going through today. So I'm not going to sugarcoat you to tell you that this is just temporary. It will all go away. It is a long and painful process. So I totally understand if it is something that is not for you because it is long and painful and it is a huge pressure on a partner. I personally had friends who left me when I felt like I needed them the most. It was painful, but eventually you just learn to accept it and move on from it. It is something that is your personal choice or your partner's choice and you just gotta be ready for it. So having said that, I noticed that with people who go through mental health struggles, there is going to be a lot of big life-changing experiences for you. For some people, as they are going through big and painful experiences, they might make some big decisions that they think would help them to cope better or heal from their pain so your friend or your partner might just decide to cut off everyone from the social circle and ghost you they might choose to move away from the city to a place where they think they're going to be happier some people choose to end relationships or temporarily take a break with their partners because they think that that is going to be the best for the relationships These are all potential things that might happen as well. And I just wanted to prepare you for something like that. And on that note, that takes me to my final point, which is to not take things personally if you are not able to help. Over the years of talking to friends and families with partners who are struggling with mental health disease, It is really hurtful to see how much pain friends and families of those who are struggling are struggling as well. You look at this person that you really care about with so much love, but you feel like they are not able to see it. Or even if they can see it, they couldn't help it, but still feel so much darkness and pain in their lives. And even though you know that it could be the chemical in their brains, it could be certain experiences that they went through. And everyone has different thresholds when it comes to dealing with problems. And some people has it more painful or more intense than others. Even though you might not feel the same way, but just by caring about them and seeing them in pain, just by being around them and trying to help, but you can't really help as much, it is a very tough place to be in. And my best advice for you is to try your best to detach yourself from their problems and take care, in fact, prioritize your own mental health as well. It is not selfish to take care of yourself first to take a good care of the people that you care about. Just like in airplanes, you are supposed to put the oxygen mask for yourself first before you help others with their mask. You have to always take care of yourself. So if your personal mental health is going through a toll as well, just remember to focus on other aspects of your health. I'm sure I shared with you guys about the health triangle before, meaning your social, mental, and physical health. They are all kind of intertwined. And when you are able to do well in just one or two aspects, the other aspect is going to be better as well. So if your mental health is not doing great, focus on improving your physical health or your social health. And your mental health would eventually kind of get lifted and feel better as well. As you take care of yourself, you will find that when you are in your best, it's so much easier for you to show up 
as the best for the people that you love. And there goes all that I wanted to share with you today. While mental health is very common, all of our experiences are also very uniquely us. The advice that I have for you today might not apply in every case, but I hope that it gives you a glimpse of how it feels like to be on the struggling side and what are we looking for when it comes to our social support. To be honest, we are all just looking for the answers ourselves. We are hoping to be happy again. We are hoping to be normal again. And we don't expect you to have all the answers for you. All that we ask for is for you to just be there for us, to be a friend when we need you, and to be a support system that we can rely on when we are at our weakest darkest and most painful moments. I hope that today's episode will encourage you to be more empathetic towards those who are struggling mentally and it gives you a little bit guidance on what to do the next time when you know that your friend is struggling with any mental health issues. Thank you so much for joining me in today's conversation. I think that it is a very important one to have. And if you have any more questions regarding what I just shared today, do not hesitate to private message me on Instagram if you want to be private or you can always drop me a comment on YouTube or answer my questions on Spotify. If you have a specific topic that you would like for me to cover more, you can also drop in a request through the form that I have on my show note. Be sure to share this on your Instagram stories because I really hope that we are able to help as many people as possible. And with that note, I would like to thank you for being here with me and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.